about diaspora along the way. And the reason I find diaspora so interesting is because I think it's a perfect structure for the world that we're now living in. Uh, because the world we're living in has fundamentally changed. And it's changed brutally, and it's changed dramatically, and it's changing at a faster rate. And the problems that we're dealing in the world are no longer national problems, they're global problems, whether it's migration, or climate change, or terrorism, our disease, our economic collapse, and the solutions will not be national, they'll be global solutions. And so just to give you an example of how globalized the world is, I just take this out of my pocket. This is a this is an Apple iPhone. You many of you have these, which is made do you know where it's made? China. It's made in Shenzhen. In China. So Shenzhen twenty five years ago was a village in China. It's now fastest growing city in the world. It's got 10 million people and it exports a fully laden container every second. So 25 million fully laden containers of products leave Shenzhen every year. And Apple iPhones are made in Shenzhen in a factory with 300,000 people. And this product has 632 components in it. 632 components and not a single component made in the United States. But for every iPhone that's sold, Apple Computer Company in the United States gets $320. And they don't make a single piece. So what we're saying is the world is not about the factors of production that were, were there when I grew up, which is raw materials labor and capital. Now it's about creativity and innovation and smart thinking. That's what the world's about. And that is country agnostic. That's moving around the world. So I live in Dublin. And just around the corner from me is the headquarters of a company called Google. And you know Google. And Google have 4,000 people working in Dublin. 10% of them are Irish. 90% of the people in Google and Dublin come from overseas. And people visiting their children who work for Google contribute 30 million to the Irish economy every year. Just think about it. These are people visiting their children or their relatives who are working in Google and Dublin. So it's about smarts. It's about that attractivity. And that's why diaspora has become really important because people slip and slide and seep from country to country, from place to place. And keeping in touch with your diaspora is part of that. And people often ask me, what's the difference between diaspora and migration? And to me, migration is that great centrifugal force pushing people out. And diaspora is a force connecting people back. And that's what's new and that's what's different because technology and communications now mean that people are connecting instantaneously, intensely, continuously and constantly. And that didn't happen before. When you left your country and went to live, and let's say you went to live in San Diego, in California, your identity was dictated by geography. You became then somebody in Southern California. 
But for the first time ever, geography is history. And people can now belong in more than one place. They can lead a hyphenated life. They can be here and there. They can be transnational. And they can connect with their home and their host countries like never before. And that's why diaspora networks are so important. And a country that realized that not that long ago, and now has an extraordinary diaspora relationship, is India. Now, India is an interesting one because in the year 2002, which is not that long ago, there was no relationship between India and her diaspora. In fact, there was a relationship. India hated the diaspora, the diaspora hated India. <laughs> there was a relationship. And in 2002, the Minister for Foreign Affairs, Manmohan Singh, who then became Prime Minister until recently, instituted a high-level commission, and they spent 18 months traveling the world. And they went to all the Indian diaspora people around the world. There are 27 million people in the Indian diaspora. Their wealth equals two-thirds of the GDP of India. What you're looking at is the most successful ethnic group in the United States are Indians. Let me give you an example. Indra Nui is 54 years of age. She's Indian born, Indian educated, went to school and university in India. Joined Johnson Johnson in India. Then went to Yale in the United States, did a PhD. Joined the Boston Consulting Group, joined a client called Pepsi. And she's now CEO of Pepsi in the United States. 350,000 employees, Indian woman. That's not what's interesting. What's interesting is that she, until last year, was head of the US-India Business Council. So what was she doing? She was helping develop the Indian economy, helping develop American companies, invest back in India. <coughs> Mokhtar Kent is the CEO of Coca-Cola. He is head of the US-Turkey Business Council. Andrew Liveris is the head of Dow Chemicals. He's head of the US Greek Business Council. Craig Barrett, Chairman and CEO of Intel, the great computer company, is head of the Irish Technology Leadership Group. So here's what's happening. These rock star figures in the United States are putting their hand up and saying, I also have a connection with somewhere else. And in the old days, you were regarded as disloyal, but not anymore. Now it's in America's interests. It's in Pepsi's interests, Coca-Cola's interests, Dow Chemicals, to have these connections, to build these global relationships. And Daesh was perfect for that. So Matt Mohan Singh led this commission for, for 18 months and wrote a report. And the report is online today, 700 pages. And the diaspora told the Indian government through this commission that you are corrupt, you're excessively bureaucratic, and you need to change. And Manmohan came back and they changed a lot of things. They, they got rid of what they call the import licensing system, which always leads to corruption. They got rid of that completely. They introduced a new passport called the Overseas Citizen of India, which gives people certain rights. And now a million people around the world have taken out that passport. The biggest business network in the world is called TIE, T-I-E, the Indus Entrepreneurs. They instituted a conference every year in January where 2,000 CEOs, Indian CEOs from around the world, come back to India. They started a Young India program. They started a No India program. They, they started an award system, the Pravesi Bharatiba Awards, every January, where outstanding Indians around the world are rewarded by the President and the Prime Minister of India. So India suddenly became, from a country that had no relationship with its diaspora, to a country that repositioned themselves globally. The brand of India became repositioned through the success of its diaspora. And they're a reflection of something very interesting that's happening and diasporas can make happen, which is to distinguish between the state and the nation. And the state, the geographical lines around the boundary, in our case in Ireland, it's a small little island. It's got some lines on it, which is our map. That's our state, but our nation is a global notion of 70 million people, which is extremely liberating. And we now in Ireland say that we have an empire, 
built not by military force or might of arms, but just by the fact that we have people all around the world who are in positions of influence and affluence, many of them, and some of them not. And our policy in Ireland is to look after, within our diaspora, the vulnerable, and we have a series of programmes to look after the vulnerable, but also to look after the successful. And so it's a two-tier program, which I think is really very interesting. And it's a public program, as a private program, as a mix. So for me to be here, I'm privileged to be here and listen to your discussions, and just to think of where India was just some years ago and where it is now, by really following this program of diaspora engagement. So thank you for listening to the few words Alfred asked me just to start off the day and give you a sense of what's happening in other countries. And good luck for the rest of it.